Hello and welcome to today's Saratech Enablement session. My name is Andrea Hall and I'm the Customer Relationship Manager at Saratech and I will be your host today. Presenting, we have Mimi Lan, who is going, um, who is an Applications Engineer here at Saratech and she'll be talking to you about SimCenter Motion. Our sessions run about 30 minutes each. Uh, sometimes they go a little bit longer um, and we, they are all recorded and posted to our Saratech YouTube channel. Make sure you check out our past sessions there. Twice a month, we meet right here to learn about tips, tricks, new and old features that will help you in your everyday tasks. This is an open forum, so if you have any questions or comments during the presentation, please type them into the chat box or the questions box over to the right, and I will kindly interrupt the presenter and let them know your comments and questions. And with that, I will pass the baton over to Mimi. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. Um, hi, I'm Mimi, and I've been with Saratech for two years. Um, I've been an engineer for seven. And uh, like we had said, we're discussing SimCenter Motion today. Uh, so SimCenter Motion is part of uh, numerous engineering solutions from Siemens, um, specifically, Sim Center Motion is an integrated environment in your NX CAD. It uh, lets you take your designs, your assemblies, and turn them into dynamic motion models. Um, it's not just kinematics. Um, kinematics is typically just uh, you take your forces and your equations of motion and you define locations and velocities. Um, this tool is more efficient than um, a dy dynamic finite element model. And the components can be either rigid or flexible bodies, although today we will just be focusing on rigid bodies to keep things simple. Um, what can you do with uh, SimCenter Motion? You can pretty much simulate any moving system. Um, it's heavily used in the aerospace industry, the automotive industry, robotics, um, and pretty much any application where you have moving parts and you would like to dynamically evaluate uh, them. You can use this tool. You can also integrate control systems to create a more complete system model. You can also extract forces and motion histories to use in a finite element analysis of components later on. Um, and so today what we have for you is a uh, trailer arm suspension and um, we will go through the steps of assigning links, assigning joints, getting this model set up, um, and we'll drive it over some obstacles and see how it responds. Um, and then we'll plot those uh, displacement, um, we'll make some displacement plots and see kind of how adding a damper changes things. So from here, I will uh, get started with the actual model. So you can see here, I've, uh, if you look in the left hand side, you'll see that I've already gone ahead and started defining a few things, you know, in the interest of time. Um, so what we have defined so far is this bottom shock, this top shock, this component is called the swing arm and the wheel. Um, we have to add in a couple more components this uh, chassis, silver chassis system and the road down here um, is what's missing. So I'll just go ahead and add those. To do that, we're gonna click on the link button and we're going to select all the bodies that would be part of this link. For this one, we'll call this road and add that. And we'll add another link for the chassis and we'll pick up all the additional bodies that are part of this model. And we're going to call this chassis. Um, I'm going to edit the mass properties of this chassis. Um, we have here displayed kind of a smaller section of the chassis, not the whole thing. So we will add mass to kind of infer that we're expecting the rest of the chassis to affect this model. Um, so now that we have all 
six links um, defined, we are going to define uh, some joints. So the joints um, kind of, I guess, uh, tell the software how these various links interact with one another. So right now we have uh, currently, based off of what's on the left-hand side, we have the bottom shock relative to the swing arm defined. We have the shock sliding relative to the other shock. And we have the wheel rotating about a pivot point relative to the swing arm. So we're missing a few more things. And um, we are going to maybe start with the chassis relative to this swing arm, which is the purple body. So I'm going to select this edge and it'll give me my origin point and my vector. Um, and I'm going to select the swing arm as the base link. So it tells it what it's re uh, swinging relative to. So um, I'm going to call this chassis swing arm. So I have a sense of what that is. Hit apply. And let's apply the next joint, which will be um, the chassis relative to the rest of the chassis. Um, so let's click on the link. The origin is going to be a point out in space because um, I had explained earlier that this is considered a cutaway of a larger model. So we'll apply those values by giving it an actual point in space. And we're going to use the uh, X vector as the rotation point. So we're going to call this chassis relative to point. Hit apply. And then we are going to connect this chassis relative to this upper shock. Um, to do that, let's click this edge. It gives me an origin and vector, and I like those. And I'm going to click the chassis. Hit apply. Actually, wait. Shock to chassis, we go specify upper shock, hit apply. All right, so now we'll apply the last joint, which will be um, a slider joint, so a different type of joint. I want this road to slide to the left to simulate this suspension arm driving over uh, the road. And to animate this, I'm going to add a driver, um, so some kind of motion to this simulation. And this will move to the left at 35 inches per second. And name this road joint. Hit OK. All right, so now we have our six links, our seven joints, and we have just a couple more things to define before we try and animate this. So I've already gone ahead and anim or added this 3D contact between the two shocks. Um, it'll basically prevent the uh, upper shock from going past the bottom shock when they come into contact. Um, sort of gives those two 3D bodies actual um, physical form in the model. So now we're going to define a 3D contact between the wheel and the road. Um, so it's a symbol just clicking the wheel and clicking the road. Um, the parameters that are here, sometimes the friction might be off, but we want it to be on in this case so that the wheel doesn't freely spin. Clicking OK, we will add one last thing, which is a spring. So um, you can see that there's a spring modeled here, but uh, NX doesn't really know that there's a spring there or does, can't differentiate it from just a normal body. So what we'll do here is we will say that the um, chassis swing arm joint that we had previously defined, we are going to um, tell it that there's a spring stiffness there. And um, it's retained some of the values I put in before. So I've given it a, a 15 pound uh, inch per degree stiffness value with a preload of 250 pound inches. So I'm happy with that. And uh, let's solve this. So coming over to motion, I'm going to right click it and hit new solution. And uh, 
five seconds to run, that's good, and 250 steps. Um, I think that's sufficient resolution, and I will hit OK. And NX will begin um, solving this. You can see the progress bar at the bottom there. All right, so now it's done solving. We can get a little preview of how it works by coming to the results tab and clicking play. And, and that looks like what I expected. You can see that um, the spring is definitely playing into how it's moving and it's quite bouncy. Um, in fact, I would like to define how bouncy this is. So, uh, to see how bouncy the chassis is, I'm going to place um, a marker on the top of the chassis. So I'm gonna kind of put it right there on that top face and hit okay. And now that that marker's there, um, I can resolve this and plot that, plot that uh, marker displacement. So I'm just gonna right click on solution and hit solve let it do its thing one more time. So if you had some forethought and um, knew that you wanted to see this, you could put it in ahead of time before solving. It saves you a little bit of time, but you know, usually you solve it and you can kind of check to see if it looks good. If it does, you can continue. So it has finished solving and I want to see this graph. So I'm gonna highlight the A001 marker in the motion navigator, expand the, um, sorry, the XY result view and um, expand displacement under absolute and magnitude. And I'm going to plot it in the window. And here I can see how the height of the chassis um, changes as a function of time. And I can see here it's more bouncy than I would like it to be. Um, so I'm gonna add a damper to the system to see how that improves this displacement graph. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to save this plot, create a graph object so that I can see um, kind of post damp versus pre damp, kind of the improvement, just so I can see the difference. So now that I've added it as a graphing object, I can actually see it down here under XY graphing in the motion navigator. And I'm just gonna store this. Um, store it to wherever you want. Maybe my desktop is fine. I'm gonna store it as um, no damp. No damp, AFU. Hit okay. Um, and I will add a damper to the system now. It's pretty simple. I'm gonna click on the damper button and I'm gonna pick the slider joint that I have previously defined, the uh, shock shock slider. Um, basically that defines the um, sliding joint between the two components of the shock. And the uh, value 2.2 is good. I think it retained it from what I knew before. So I'm gonna keep that. And now that I have the damper in the system, I need to um, solve this one more time. All right. Um, now that we're done solving it, let's just run it and see what it looks like. You can see it's not um, quite as bouncy as it was. So this is the kind of improvement that I was looking for in this uh, system. And just to confirm that it is what I like or what I've been looking for, I'm going to, uh, I wanna compare it to the previous 
uh, graph. So I'm going to come here and this no damp, that's what I had just saved. I'm going to right click and um, I want to plot it. I'm going to plot it here. So this is our graph from before. And I'm going to overlay the new graph on top of it. So here, right click overlay. And now you can see how much um, less amplitude this displacement has. Um, and that is exactly what you want from a damped system. So um, I guess that's it. So going back to the PowerPoint, you can see what we went through. We, um, we had a mechanism, a part file. We assigned links, we assigned joints, then we assigned springs and dampers, uh, made some 3D contacts, animated the mechanism, created plots of the uh, pre-damp and post-damp condition, overlaid them, and then just sort of looked at what it looked like, uh, displacement over time. And, oh, I guess we created a marker to be able to measure that displacement in the first place. Um, yeah, and that's it. I guess I will hand it back to Andrea. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mimi. Great job. Uh, so I just wanted to let everyone know we'll be posting this video to YouTube later today. So feel free to pass that along to your friends and colleagues. And please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel um, and follow us on Twitter, Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, of course, go to events at saratechinc.com to see all of our future sessions. Our next session is going to be on April 5th, uh, a Thursday again, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be going over Flow EFD for NX12. All right. And uh, of course, I'm sure most of you already know, but in case you don't, we do offer engineering services to address your demand for advanced engineering capabilities, as well as additive manufacturing. Um, some of our partners are Mark Forged and HP. We've got some, some really exciting things going on with additive manufacturing. So if you have any questions about that, please reach out to us at info at saratechinc.com. And like I said, be sure to follow us on all social media so you are up to date on our upcoming events. And uh, thank you so much for, for uh, attending today. And be sure to stick around for about 30 seconds after the session. Uh, we do have a, a quick little survey. If you could just let us know how we did today, we would really appreciate that. Thank you so much, and we hope to hear from you soon. Have a great day.